You'd have to go a long way to find such a stickler for punctuality as Walter Morrison. Every morning, seven o'clock on the dot, he sets out from his home in Glasgow and heads for a printing works two miles away. Just as he's done every day for the past four and a half years. He walks because it saves money, but he's always at the factory door, right on time. Unfortunately for Walter, the front door is as far as he ever gets. Because, you see, five months ago, he lost his job as a screen printer at the factory on an industrial estate. And every morning since, he's doggedly staged a one-man campaign at the works to get reinstated. When he first lost his job, Walter staged a work in for three days. But the company got a court order forcing him to leave. And that's when Walter decided on his work out. Uh, firstly, I feel that the redundancy was unjust. And secondly, I'm a registered disabled person and I was accepted into this firm under the quota provisions of the Disabled Persons Act. I was trained by this firm and I feel that it, it couldn't dismiss me normally or this would have been in breach of the Act. And the redundancy has been used as a pretext to, well, I would suggest, that, to rid himself of a shop steward. He's been protesting now for so long that he's almost part of the scenery and the workers take him for granted. But most days, he wishes one or two a cheery Thank top of the morning. Morning, Scab. Morning, Blackleg. The high spot of Walter's working day is his regular attempt at renegotiation with the boss of the firm, Mr. William McCormick. The main thing started five months ago when we lost rather a large contract and three or four men had to be declared redundant. We did uh, speak to the unions and they agreed on the matter. However, amongst them was our lone picket, Mr. Walter Morrison, whom is still at the door after five months. Uh, he decided, strangely enough, that he wouldn't take the job uh, which I had got him offered in Paisley, which is just about two miles away from here, although at an increased basic wage. The others did accept the job. And I had considered at that point, I had done my best for everybody concerned, including Mr. Morrison. However, he decided to do, to really to um, work for me. That's about it. You see, he also argues that you won't fire him outright because that would put you in breach of the regulations covering disabled people. No, that is not true. We don't have enough people here now and we have checked this with the authorities. We do not have to employ, at this present point in time, any disabled person. How would you sum up your personal relationship with him? Well, it's difficult to be hypocritical, not to be hypocritical about it, but in the past four years, uh, I had nothing personal against Mr. Morris, except for the fact that I did see quite early on that he was rather a militant and in this type of job, we, li we like to be close to our work, work people. And um, this atmosphere of uh, a shipyard uh, type of shop steward just doesn't fit in at all. The situation was this, wasn't it? You became a shop steward and yes. a pretty militant one at that. Yeah, that's well, what... I would accept that, yes. Yes, I would accept that. And that's really what caused the trouble, wasn't it? Well, I've, that may be his opinion of it, you know. Uh, I represent the members not the company. So what it boiled down to in the end, that it, it was a clash of personalities between you and the boss? Well, he may feel it was a, a personality clash. To me, he's just another employer, you know, and I would go back again. So I've got nothing personal against him. But look, the chaps who went on strike in support of you and uh, were fired as a result have all <laughs> gone and found themselves other jobs. Don't you think it's about time you really came to terms with it and took the redundancy money and did the same thing? No. No, no, that would be admitting that uh, the, there was necessity for the redundancy. Quite seriously, though, how long are you prepared to keep this up? Oh, as, as long as necessary. As long as it's uh, needed to end up with a just decision, you know. I think it's more of a nuisance now. Uh, after all, one expects to see smiling faces <laughs> coming to work, and it's not very nice to be constantly reminded that uh, you've done something which, although you consider at the time was perfectly correct, uh, is dragging on far too long. 
You see, there have been occasions, haven't there, when you've nipped out there and pinched his posters? Well, it's all I can do. I rather like the cherry trees outside the door. I don't want the sap to be destroyed, just the same as I didn't want the sap to be destroyed in this business. Now, does he stand any hope at all of ever working for you again? I'm afraid not. He got himself into this mess. He'll have to get himself out of it himself. <laughs>